Welcome human resource and organization development professionals. I am recording this week from my hotel room in Dallas, uh, here to be working with a client tomorrow. Um, but I didn't want uh, a short amount of time to miss out on the opportunity to share a bit more, in particular, some of what I am learning uh, through the work of Amy Edmondson. She's written a book called The Fearless Organization, which is about how psychological safety is necessary for top performance and how leaders go about creating it. There's a couple of tools in there that I'm going to briefly share, uh, partly to whet your appetite, to get you to go ahead and read the book. Uh, but the other part is I want you to have a sense of how you can take a simple concept and use it as a tool for organizational development. Let's get started with a couple of models or charts from Amy Edmondson's book, The Fearless Organization. So, uh, the book, The Fearless Organization by Dr. Amy C. Edmondson, she is a professor at Harvard uh, in, the, in the management school there. Uh, superb. I am really loving. Uh, I've read the book once. I've probably noted it as much as any book I've, I've read, certainly in recent memory. Uh, and I'm going back through it and incorporating it into my training. I'm also sharing it with the executives that I know. There's three executives recently. Uh, one yesterday, actually. I bought a copy, put it in the mail to them, because I think this information is so important. So what's it about? Of course, uh, the title says it. It's about creating psychological safety in the workplace for learning, information, and growth. Why is that important now? Um, we live in a world, a business world, business environment, uh, that is characterized by volatility, uncertainty, uh, complexity, and ambiguity. The easy solutions are no longer there. The competition is as uh, strong as ever, and we need to create additional value if we're going to compete. Well, how do we create that additional value? By getting all of our brains working together, thinking together, and seamlessly sharing information. Uh, gone are the days of the one-person genius who figures out everything about where we need to go. We need all of us. Um, and you're going to get some ideas from me as I share some things uh, with you. Um, my voice may be the one thing that sees that essential issue that we need to address or sees an opportunity. So we need that. Uh, the problem is, is that human nature gets in the way of us speaking up, which leads to the first tool uh, that I want to share with you. It's Table 2-2. Um, I don't have the page reference because I took a picture off of my phone. Go ahead and buy the book and you'll get this. But it's Table 2-2, Why Silence Wins and the Voice Silence Calculation. Dr. Edmondson contends, uh, she calls voice, that is, speaking up. That is the skill that's needed in our organization is for people to see something and say something and be sharing the best of what they have. Uh, but too often we choose silence instead. Uh, she gives examples in her book and in various ways, but one that I, I recall is of a doctor who's getting ready to uh, prescribe a particular uh, course of treatment for a patient and a nurse who fails to speak up even though this nurse, she, she thinks that, mm, I'm not quite sure that's the right way to go. I'm not sure that's the right dosage for the pills uh, that we ought to be using. Now, it's not so much a conscious calculation that this nurse is going through, but she just looks and she chooses to stay silent. Now, why, we ask ourselves, if she thinks it might, uh, that, the, that the doctor might be going on the wrong path, in which case her use of voice would certainly, if you look at the tool here, that would certainly benefit uh, uh, the, the patient and the hospital. And even if she's wrong, she speaks up, she says something, and the doctor says, no, 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 let me explain to you a little bit more, and educates her, she's now smarter. So when people speak up, the only benefit, I mean, there is benefit that will, should occur to the organization or its customers. 
But when might this benefit occur? Well, it, it typically occurs after some delay. It's not certain when we speak up that, uh, that everybody will benefit, particularly when we're bringing some contrary information that others might not want to hear. The certainty of that benefit, at least the felt certainty, is low. Now, the option or the other option than speaking up is simply to do what we often do, which is to remain silent. Well, why do we do that? Well, the person that will benefit will be me because I won't look stupid. Every time I speak up, I am taking a personal risk. Um, if I stay silent, uh, I certainly won't look stupid, and I will have that little bit of uh, uh, safety is not the right word because it confuses it with the topic. But the point is, I will keep my reputation, and I'll do it immediately, and I'm certain to keep my reputation if I don't say anything stupid. So, so that is oftentimes why silence wins out over speaking up. She goes on, of course, to make the point that's why it's so important on leaders to create a climate of psychological safety so that our people will move in the opposite direction of human nature and speak up, know that they can speak up, know that it's valued. Anyway, so that's tool number one. Tool number two uh, is, again, another chart. Uh, what Dr. Edmondson says, though, psychological safety is uh, extremely important for organizational performance. It's insufficient to guarantee organ organizational performance. In fact, we must also have high standards, which are not guaranteed and actually take different kinds of work, right? So, so psychological safety is not the all end all in itself, a be all end all in itself. Um, so, as you can see, she breaks down organizations where there's high psychological safety or low psychological safety and high standards or low standards, and that gives us four areas. When there's low safety and low standards, well, you know, it's not, uh, it's not safe in, to speak up, but you know what? We're not really, it's not a big deal anyway, so eh, I don't care. When there is high psychological safety, um, but the standards are low. The bar is low. Everybody's comfortable. It's easy. No problem. Uh, when there is low psychological safety, but the stakes are high and the standards are high, as for example in the, the, uh, the medical field, right? Um, that is a, a recipe for anxiety. Do I speak up? What if I don't speak up? What, you know, it's, it's a tough place to be in, and in fact, Dr. Edmondson says that's the, the, the real group, the organizations that really need to get a hold of these concepts and implement them. Uh, we need for our people to be speaking up. But uh, anyway, the fourth one, get back on, on track here, uh, when there's high psychological safety and high standards, when we are reaching for the stars, when it's important to speak up and we know that we can, in fact, there's more risk in these organizations or these uh, departments or teams for not speaking up than there is when we speak up. Now that that's the place where we have learning and high performance. So, love charts. How do you use these two tools? Um, so, of course, you can use them for instruction, right? To teach people as you grab on, which I know you'll want to, as you read this book and you grab onto the concepts of psychological safety, you're going to want to be creating that within your team. Okay, And so you'll need to teach your people about it to get them on board because you are going to want them. In most places, you're going to want them to speak up more than they have. Now, great tools to do it. So you can teach them about voice and silence and, hey, there's these tugs and pulls against us, but we need to stand against it. Uh, you can also talk about uh, high standards and the necessity for high standards as well. Now, that's the instruction, instructional ability, and there's lots of things that you would want to teach from this. But I think you also want to use it for assessment. I'm one of my core roles when I work with organizations is that of facilitator. That is, I'm helping uh, various members of a team to bring out their best thinking so that they can design a solution. 
Okay, so in some ways I'm helping create more psychological safety. That's what I do. But what I love to do is present people with solid concepts like is presented in these two tools and then get them to start assessing where they are so that they can start thinking about how they want to improve. So in the first case, I think as, as we're talking about voice and silence, um, you then follow this up with, okay, so where do we, let's just start, let's assume I'm, we're talking to an executive team. Where do we, high as we are in the organization, where do we exhibit voice and, it says or, but and where do we exhibit silence? And why? What's that about? I think this is a great place for people to look at behaviors and, and taking on the courage needed uh, and, and the reinforcement to encourage the people around them. Hey, we want everyone to be speaking what, uh, what they're thinking and bringing their best. I think the second one down at the bottom uh, is present this to a team. And then ask the team, so which of these quadrants best describes our department and team? How we are, are we in the apathy zone, comfort zone, anxiety zone, learning, high performance, and why? What specific concrete examples can you point to that would put us in one of these places? Uh, I think actually, before I lose this thought, um, by doing this, by having people assess within a team about the behaviors that they use and where we are and why you think that, of course you know what we're doing is we're asking people to step in, right? Talk a little bit more, to assume psychological safety and to, to step into that. And as more people step into it, in fact, you're building it within your group. Um, so, which quadrant best describes our team? Just talked about that. Where do we exhibit voice, silence or voice? These are two superb tools. And by the way, these are just little nuggets. Uh, I just found them and thought, wow, I, I dog-eared them. Let me share this with my, my folks. Um, there's lots in this book. So you'll want to pick up a copy of The Fearless Organization, read through it, and, uh, and let's talk about it. And I hope you enjoyed today's video with tools from Amy Edmondson's book, The Fearless Organization. Go ahead and pick up a copy of that very excellent work, and uh, you'll find a lot more there uh, to help you in your practice. Thanks so much. Go ahead and give me a thumbs up. Uh, subscribe to the channel if you haven't already. And until next time, be well.